So you finally got that chopper out on the road. Now you wanna make sure you have the tools you need for that bike to make it back under its own power. But with no two choppers being exactly alike, it can be hard to tell what tools you need to have in your tool roll for your specific motorcycle. So for today's video, we're gonna take a slightly different approach. I'm gonna take you through the five most common breakdowns that leave chopper guys on the side of the road. I'm gonna show you what tools I carry in my toolkit to get myself on of those jams and then I'm gonna have you follow along plug in the appropriate sizes for your motorcycle so that by the end of this video you have a top tier tool roll that'll get you out of any issues you might run into thanks for watching Grease's Garage I'm gonna help you skip the struggle so as you guys can see I've got the tool roll that I use laid out here on the table I'll show you it very quickly it's the kind that hangs down like this it's got four slots on it with zippers and then some top and uh, top and outside compartments on it. This is really not a video about the tool roll itself, but if you do see the video, you like this particular tool roll, it's a cheap $30 one I got on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description, but again, any tool roll you wanna use, that's not what this video is about. So, let's go ahead and get into the start of our list of the top five things that leave people stranded on the side of the road. Before I tell you what I think number one is, go ahead and comment down below what do you think is the most common breakdown that you've seen from the people you ride with. All done with that? All right, let's get into it. For me, the number one breakdown is electrical. It is the one thing that people set and forget. They never think about their electrical system until it becomes a problem. So. That's always the first place I start when I'm building out my toolkit. The first specific tools you're gonna want is whatever you need to get to your battery and your fuse block. So, for my particular motorcycle, uh, anybody who hasn't seen it, check out some of my previous videos, but sitting right here over my shoulder, it is a 1994 Evo Softail, which has been hardtailed. So, to get to my battery, it's right under my seat and my seat comes off with one bolt. So. The first tool that goes into my tool roll is this right here. This is a 3 16 Allen socket, and then it partners up with this stubby ratchet. Now you could use a full size ratchet, but I'm trying to save weight. I'm trying to make this kit as light as possible. And listen to the sound of that. I just love these little snap on stubby ratchets. It's my favorite ratchet. So this is what I need to pop my seat off. These two click together. That goes into my tool roll, that is the first item. That gets my seat off. Now I can get to my battery, I can get to my fuse block. The next thing that you're going to want in your tool roll is some of these little guys, fuses. So my particular bike, my fuse block takes ATC style fuses, which are these ones I'm showing you right here. Your bike may take mini ATC fuses, it may take some other type of fuse. This is where the homework part starts for you guys. Whatever your bike is, plug that in and start making your list as you follow along with this video. So for me, ATC style fuses in the appropriate amperage for my bike. So I throw those in. Next thing you might want to do on the side of the road is diagnose what went wrong in the first place. For that, the most valuable tool in your tool roll is this little guy right here, your voltmeter. This is a $10 Harbor Freight voltmeter that I've been using for the last three years. So if your excuse for not carrying a voltmeter is that you don't wanna buy some expensive tool, trust me, these are 12 volt systems. These are not complicated machines that we're working with. A $10 voltmeter does plenty. It's got DC 20 for checking voltage and it can check continuity if you're one of those fancy guys and you like to check your continuity. I'm a very basic wiring guy. DC 20 gets me through most stuff. But anyways, I find this to be so handy that I actually put this in this external, there's only one external pocket on my tool roll. I put the voltmeter in it. It's that important. Keep it on the ready. So next up, the next tool you want to carry with you is this little guy right here. This is a spark plug. This is actually not a spark plug socket, but it is the socket that is appropriately sized for my spark plugs, which on my Evo Softail is a 13 16 Quick note about this socket. This is a half inch drive. Once you get up to 13 16 you're usually out of the 3 8 drive. So this is a little 3 8 to half inch adapter. 
click that in, it lives inside the socket. It never comes out. All my ratchets are 3 8 I have half inch, but they're not in my tool roll. So don't get stuck on the side of the road with a socket you can't even use because you got the wrong drive. So spark plug socket to be able to pull your spark plugs out. What if you find out that your spark plugs are bad? Well, that takes us to our next tool, which is a spare set of plugs. Spare set of plugs is always nice to have. I am notoriously cheap and I reuse my spark plugs all the time. Usually I can at home take a propane torch and just burn all the carbon off, put them right back in. They last forever, they really do. But on the side of the road, you don't have a propane torch, maybe you need them. If I've gone ahead and bought them, you should go ahead and buy them, it's time. Put those in your toolkit. Next up, super simple fix here, but this will get you out of a bind. This is electrical tape. Reason we carry electrical tape, we'll go ahead and throw that in there, is the most common issue I see with electrical is not a component failing, it's just a wire getting pinched. So once that wire gets pinched, like off my headlight, it snakes back down the frame, the wire gets pinched when the bars turn, and then all of a sudden you've got bare wire grounding out to your frame and your headlight bulbs, your headlight shorts out. So little electrical tape, wrap that around wherever it's pinched, and then that'll get you home until you can replace the, the wire and route it in a better direction. So we did breeze over these little fuses that I talked about before, but just wanna mention this quickly. If you have a fuse blow on you while you're on a ride, Replace the fuse, yes, but trace out that wire too because there's a good chance that something went wrong along the way of that circuit. So you don't wanna just pop a new fuse in and then five minutes down the road, you're doing it again, wasting two fuses because the wire got pinched. There's a reason that that fuse blew. Investigate it first, then replace the fuse, electrical tape if you have to, all good to go. Now. This last section here is gonna be for my fellow points guys out there. You know how it goes when you like the simple ignitions, carrying this, a spare set of points, is super easy. This is a $25, excuse me, this is even less. It's like a $13 item. It's 25 for the pair. So I always carry points, which are these guys, and a condenser, which is this guy. This is a Blue Streak condenser. These are V-twin points. I know people say Blue Streak, they like the Blue Streak points. I don't care for the way they mount. I tried to like them, I wanted to like them. They are made better than these ones. But the way that these connect is just easier. It's easier to change on the side of the road. So whatever brand you want, I'm not here to sell you on a particular brand, but if you're running points ignition, having a spare set of points and a spare condenser is cheap insurance. If you have an electronic ignition, it's a great time to throw it in the trash and get points, am I right? So, moving on, the last thing I carry with the points is if I did have to put in a new set of points, this right here is a feeler gauge. These ones are made by Stir It or Steer It or Star It. I never remember how the hell you say it, but I know that people who are machinists love this damn company, and it basically has all the different sizes in there. It weighs almost nothing. I know there are other alternatives. People say you could take the, the cellophane wrapper from a pack of cigarettes and you could use that to gap your point. Just bring the damn feeler gauge. So that's it guys, that's it for electrical. If you were so inclined and if you had them on hand, you could bring a spare headlight bulb and a spare tail light bulb. That wouldn't be a bad thing to add to your kit. I don't have it in mine. It's just not something that pops hardly ever on my bike, but maybe later on I'll add that to the toolkit. So that's gonna do it for electrical. Simple, basic, not a lot of weight. Now let's move on to the next section. The second most common cause of chopper guys getting left on the side of the road is fuel or carburetor issues. So the first tool, which isn't gonna go in your tool roll, but is the most important by far, is this guy right here. This is a fuel bottle a reserve fuel bottle. This is cheap insurance. This is a 30 fluid ounce fuel bottle and that thing will save your life. If you have a small tank and you don't have a sight gauge on it, or even if you do have a sight gauge and you're like me and you just didn't look at it that particular day, you will push your bike home because it ran out of gas. As stupid as it sounds, you might think it's crazy for even putting this in the video and listing it as a breakdown, but 
it happens a lot more often. I mean, a lot more times you run out of gas than your st- than times that your stator goes or times that your motor blows up. So get the fuel bottle, put it somewhere on your bike, never think about it again. Next up, I'm a big fan of starting with the simple things first. Everybody, when they have a fuel issue, they wanna go right into tearing apart the carb. Let me show you this. This is my fuel line, and this is my inline fuel filter on the line. I have had so many enormous bugs make their way into this fuel filter that you would not believe it. I don't know if this is just a New Hampshire thing or what the problem is, but I am always finding blockages right here. So before you go digging into your carburetor, carry the tools you need to open your fuel filter. For most people who are normal, unlike myself, and they just have a fuel filter you spin off with your hands, I have this one that I seemingly never get around to replacing, and I need a set of vice grips to loosen this guy up. So the next thing that goes into my tool roll is these guys, small set of vice grips. These I think are a six inch set of vice grips. So next section is the vice grips. That lets me check my fuel line. So maybe I look through the fuel line, there's nothing wrong with that. Then it's time to delve a little deeper into the carburetor. Now I run this guy right here, the best carb on the planet, the SNS Super E. Look at that beautiful carburetor and that velocity stack, gotta love it. So enough oogling over the carburetor. Let's talk about the tools you need to have are the tools you need to access your carburetor. Now for me, this is super easy because I have no air cleaner blocking the carburetor. It's right out there in the open and most of the controls, like up here you've got your fuel mixture screw, on this side you've got your accelerator pump, and then on this side you've got your idle speed adjuster screw. On the Super E, they're all out there in the open. So you don't need many tools unless you have an air cleaner in the way. Uh, but if you have a jet that gets gummed up, I'll show you the tools that I pack for that. So. On the bottom of this carburetor, you can see our float bowl drain plug. That's the brass plug down there at the bottom. So the first tool roll, or excuse me, the first tool in my tool roll is this little guy. This is a 5 8 socket. This will remove that drain plug. So 5 8 socket going into the tool roll. That lets me check the main jet through the hole in the bottom, but in order to pop the main jet out, I use this little guy. This is a little flathead screwdriver that has a, a wide top, but obviously, as you can see here, is very short. So I carry this to pop the main jet out while the carburetor's still on the bike. If I don't see anything in the main jet and there was an issue with the fuel, then it's time to take the float bolt off. Now, speaking of being cheap and not buying things I should buy, they do make extended float bowl screws for the SNS Super E. They're like 40 bucks and it's just, mm, they're, they're, I don't know what the price point is that I would buy them at. I, if they were, tw I'll tell you this, if they were 20 bucks, I'd have bought them years ago. But for some reason that $40, mm, I just can never seem to pull the trigger on it. So if I was gonna take these four, and actually I colored them in blue so you could see them there. If I was gonna take the float bowl off my carburetor, while I was on the side of the road, I would just take the carburetor off the bike. And the reason I say that is to remove the carburetor from the bike on, on this carb, it's just these two bolts. And the way these bolts are accessed is with this guy. This is a 5 16 Allen socket. So this little socket pops these off, but in order to get to them, you have to come in from the other side of the bike. So for that reason, I also include this. This is a probably eight or 10 inch extension with the 5 16 socket on it. This will let me sneak in through the fins, two screws, carburetor comes right off the bike, then it's right out here in front of me. I can go ahead and take the bowl apart, super easy. I would just prefer to do it that way so I'm not burning my fingers on the motor trying to get up under there because I'm too cheap to buy the float bowl screws. So this goes into the carburetor slash fuel section of my tool roll. And you can see the way I'm doing this here. I'm kinda this is all my electrical, this is all the carburetor, and then our other sections are gonna go further ahead. So basically, depending on the issue, I know which pouch I'm going into. Last thing I include is this guy. This is another flathead screwdriver, but slightly longer. Uh, this is just easier to hold, 
and that stubby one is good for taking out the main jet, but it doesn't really fit into the other, uh, the other areas of the carburetor to get those float bowl screws off. So I always have two flathead screwdrivers, and that's it. That's all I bring for the fuel-related stuff. As you can see in this pocket, it's fairly slim. It's not a lot of gear, but it's enough to get you off the side of the road. Next segment. The next most common cause of breakdowns for us chopper guys is wheel and chain related issues. So what tools do I bring for this? First off, if you're having a wheel related issue, something's going wrong with your axle adjuster or your chain, the first thing you're gonna need to do is crack your axle nut. So for that, I've got this eight inch Husky adjustable wrench. I don't know why I name dropped Husky like it's a big brand. This is a Home Depot. <laughs> So a Home Depot adjustable wrench that I'm stunting on everybody with. So I have this adjustable wrench. I use this because it's multi-purpose. You could bring the actual wrench that fits your, your axle nut, but I just find it handy to have an adjustable for a lot more than just that. So this is what I carry. So I throw this in there. That'll let me crack the axle nut. Then if you have to mess with your axle adjusters, the next tool you're going to want to keep in this section is the appropriate wrench for your axle adjusters. In my case, this is a 9 16th wrench. I carry the stubby one because axle adjusters are small. It's not like you have to put a crazy amount of torque on these things. This will let me adjust them. And then when it's time to snug them down, I can use this guy on the axle adjuster bolt and then this other wrench to snug up the nut. So handy little pair. Go ahead, throw those in there. Doesn't weigh a whole lot, but it'll let you make adjustments to the wheel. Next, let's say you have an issue with that chain. For example, the master link clip pops off and the chain boop, becomes a big line and slides down the road. If you wanna be able to put that back on, you're gonna to wanna to carry a spare master link. As you can see, this one is still in the bag. I've never had my chain pop off. Um, I don't know how frequent of a problem that is, but being that this is a $5 part and it gives me a little peace of mind, I figure, I bought it with the chain, I might as well carry it with me. So weighs nothing, might get you out of a bind if your chain gets messed up while you're going down the road. Next up, I know we all like to play fast and loose with our tire pressure. And most people don't even check this at all. And if they do, maybe they check it once a year. Next time you're getting oil at the auto parts store because you don't wanna pay Harley for their oil and oil filters, pick up one of these. This is a tire pressure gauge, it is like, $1 at the counter of Advance Auto Parts or whatever your favorite store is. This isn't a sponsored ad for Advance Auto Parts. A lot of name drops in this episode. So just grab one of these, whatever tire pressure you like. On mine, I like it about 30 on the rear. And then the front, I usually have more like 35. I'm running, basically running two rear tires. I got both my tires are 16 by five. Um, I love the low, chunky look of that bike. So if you have like skinny 21 spool wheel in the front, uh, experiment, decide what kind of pressure you want. Most of us have either a 16, an 18. Some of you guys like to get weird and do the 19s in the rear. Um, those might have different pressures. So pick whatever pressure you want. That's up to you. This right here, next tool, this is a valve core removal tool. Um, I have this in here because much like that tire pressure gauge, I picked it up at the auto parts counter and I've had it ever since. If you ever had yours come loose, if that's a thing that happens, you could go ahead and tighten it back up with this or this actually will lead us into the next topic, which is the most controversial part of what I'm packing or rather what I'm not packing. There are people who say, you know, if, my, if I have a blowout on the side of the road, I've got the tire spoons, I'm gonna pop that tire off, I carry a spare tube, I'm gonna throw it in there. If you're doing a cross country trip, that's the kind of thing I would expect to see. But like we said in the beginning, this is an EDC toolkit. If this thing gets too big, this thing is gonna get left at home. You all know how it goes. You have that breakdown and you're like, oh, I have this great toolkit, but I just, I didn't think it was gonna be necessary to bring it. And then you're laying there thinking, why didn't I just have a smaller toolkit with stuff I actually would use in the moment? So for me, I don't carry a patch kit. I don't carry extra tools or anything like that. Even under the best of circumstances here in my shop, I struggle to put, in, to put in a new tire on. I mostly take them to Breaker Bikes in Exeter, New Hampshire. Shout out to Breaker Bikes, 20 bucks for a mount and balance. They kill it over there. If you're anywhere in my area, 
I don't go anywhere else for tires. And I certainly don't mess around with them with tire spoons on the side of the road for three hours. I'll just get my truck and have some, and I'll throw the bike in the back. But like I said, if you have, actually, I will put one caveat to this. If you are running tubeless tires, I would carry a patch kit. It's the kind you use uh, that I've used a million times for trucks, cars, with the reamer tool where you punch that thing through the tire and then you put those little bacon strips in there and you cut them flush. That actually works and it's pretty fast. You're not stuck on the side of the road. You're not trying to break the bead and use little CO2 cartridges to inflate your tire back up. The patch kits are actually, for tubeless tires, are pretty good. If I had tubeless tires, that would be in here, but I don't, so they're not. Next section. So the next section that I think is one of the most common issues, especially with older bikes like shovel heads and earlier, is exhaust issues. This leaves so many people stuck on the side of the road. And in fact, I had my exhaust crack, the mount itself cracked off while I was at, uh, I was riding the Kankamangas Highway with a group of eight people. And my exhaust just clankety clank, 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 hitting the frame. Oh my God, what are we gonna do? So let me take you through the tools I bring for exhaust repair. First up, this little half inch socket. This is the, the size for the exhaust stud nuts on the Evo. So I actually team this thing up with that same long extension that I showed you guys earlier. I pop this on there. This let me get to the, the two that are right in this section here next to the, uh, the seat post. It can be a little tricky to get to those without a long extension. So I use this, this extension kind of works double duty for taking the carb off and for doing the exhaust repairs. One thing I do want to mention though, if you see here, this is a swivel head, uh, swivel head, flex head, whatever you call it, you know what I'm talking about, wobbly head. Make sure you get a wobbly head extension because when you're trying to reach around that seat post, you don't always get like the perfect angle on it. So having that wobble is actually pretty cru crucial, at least for my bike, for getting the, uh, the exhaust stud tightened back down. So this goes into the toolkit. Next, there's one of the four exhaust stud nuts in the front that is butted right up against the down tube. And for that one, I can't use a half inch socket, so I have to use a half inch wrench. So I carry a stubby half inch wrench. This is plenty of torque for me to be able to tighten that thing down, but not long enough that I'm gonna snap that stud off because <laughs> we all know when we, gotta, we wanna get that thing tightened down, you run a good chance of never getting it tightened back up. So that's to tighten the exhaust on the, the engine side. But what if you're in a situation like I was where you're riding the kank and the mount breaks? It's not something you can tighten back down and for, for reference on my bike, the mount stud is also half inch, so it's the same deal. Uh, that works for both of them. But if the mount cracks, I've got this little guy. These, so for anybody who doesn't know, I'm an iron worker by day. This is the tie wire that we use for tie and rebar. I've heard it called a million different things. I've always called it tie wire. Uh, I've heard it called nine wire, bailing wire, mechanics wire. Uh, I don't care what you call it. You know what I'm talking about. It's flexible wire that is just steel. And the reason this is handy is because this is what got me out of a bind. One of my buddies had this in his tool roll and we were able to wrap the exhaust to the frame and this stuff won't melt. Zip ties are cool, zip ties are handy. We'll talk about those in a second, but this right here is gonna stand up to the heat of your exhaust. So always have, that's probably about a, a six foot piece that I've got. I'll, I'll ne probably never use that much, but it weighs nothing, so throw it in there. That's the exhaust all squared away. The fifth section is what I like to call structural. This is anything that's on your bike, fastener-wise, that can rattle loose and come off and leave you fighting to get your bike home. So, first thing I think of, gas tank. My gas tank is actually out for paint right now with No Luck Paintworks. Shout out to Dan over at No Luck Paintworks. I can't wait. I'm gonna be bringing you guys a video of that process too. Excited to be working with Dan on that, so stay tuned for that in a future uh, video on the channel. But my gas tank's got two bolts that are both this same 5 16 Allen. This is something I wanted to mention too. When you're building your bike, do this as much as you can. If you're seeing the theme here, 5 16 tightens my gas tank. It tightens my carburetor. It tightens 
both the, the fender bolt for the sissy bar and where the sissy bar mounts to the frame. So the 5 16 Allen, this thing's working like quadruple duty for me as opposed to having multiple sockets for every little thing. So structural, that gas tank, whatever holds your gas tank down, throw that fastener in there. So if you're riding down, you start to hear that rattling noise, you can secure it back. Next, my fender. Right here where the fender mounts to the the cross member under the seat, that is the 3 16 Allen. Again, you see in the theme here, double duty, right? This is the same one that takes my seat off, also tightens my fender down. Do that as much as you can. Obviously, these both go hand in hand with the same ratchet I was telling you about before. Just a little stubby ratchet, goes in the toolkit. Stuff I'm already carrying for other parts of the bike can then also work double duty to help with the structural aspect. But you don't wanna be on the road, your fender's coming loose, your sissy bar's coming loose, and not have the tools to tighten it back down. So that fifth aspect we talked about, that structural components that can fall off, make sure you have the tools to get those tightened back up. So guys, that's the main areas of issues that we run into. Next, we're gonna talk about just a couple general nice to have items that are kind of handy. And the next one I've got is actually right here in my pocket. This doesn't live in my tool roll, um, though it should probably because I've got more than one of these, but this is just a multi-tool. The one I typically carry is a, I have a Leatherman rebar that I really like. This is not that one. This one's just for the tool roll. Um, so this little guy gives you a handy set of pliers if you need to grab something. It's always helpful to have a set of pliers. You've got like a backup flathead screwdriver, you've got a small blade, Phillips head screwdriver, can opener, knife, you know, all the, all the things you would expect from a multi-tool. Just a cheap multi-tool is fine. Throw this in your pack just as a extra set of hands. And actually when you're doing that, uh, that tie wire, if you really wanna snug that stuff down, you're gonna want a set of pliers to grip on that so you can really tighten that stuff down the way you want to. Next up, this is a lifesaver. Loctite. Now, everybody who uses Loctite knows the blue is the red, the red is the blue. Why they did this, I will never understand. But personally, for me, see, I almost grabbed the wrong one right there. I always use red Loctite. I use it on my tank bolts. I use it on basically anything I don't want to come loose. The only thing I ever used to use blue Loctite for was the the screws on my carburetor back when I had the stock teardrop air cleaner because if they were to ever come loose, they'd get sucked into the motor. So I put blue Loctite on them, but they were just too delicate to be using red Loctite. Now that I went to Velocity Stack, I don't even carry the blue Loctite, but if you want to use blue Loctite, you can use that or some red Loctite, throw that in your tool roll. Next, zip ties. Super handy. You always want to have some zip ties in your tool roll. You never know what's going to break, come loose. Even straps on your pack that come loose that you need to tether back down. Always want to have a set of zip ties on you. Just get you out of a bind. And I think we made it through. Guys, that's it. That is soup to nuts. Everything I carry in this tool roll. Let me go ahead and just zip all these pouches closed. Roll this thing up and just show you what we're working with. This is the tool roll, right? About that wide, about that long. It fits super comfortably right above my headlight on my handlebars. Again, guys, this is meant to go on your bike, stay on your bike, have everything you need and nothing that you are very unlikely to use because the bigger it gets, the less likely you are to bring it. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for us this week. I hope that you got value out of this top tier tool roll build. Uh, go ahead, rewatch the video when you're sitting next to your bike. If you're not sitting next to it right now, get a pen and a paper, write down, when I'm talking about this thing, that thing, write down the size for your bike. Then you know, you by the end of that video, you've got a full list. Everything that needs to go in your toolkit, put it on the bike, never think about it again. If you guys are getting value out of this video, hit subscribe, hit like, share the video with a friend, and if you wanna run those points I was telling you about earlier, but you've got an Evo motor, click this video right here and I'll show you how you convert your Evo Sportster or Evo Big Twin to run a points ignition. 
Thanks, guys. Catch you next week.